Hi, this is Scott with Learn to Stop Hunger, and today we're going to talk about how to make a rounded shadow effect with Paint.net. I've already done a couple of videos where I talked about Paint.net. In case you haven't seen those, Paint.net is a free alternative to MS Paint, which MS Paint comes with Windows. Paint.net you have to download separately, but as I said, it's free and it has many additional features that make it a worthy addition on your computer. Today we're going to take a closer look at how you can do a rounded shadow effect using Paint.net. So I'm going to assume that you've already downloaded Paint.net. If you haven't, go ahead and type Paint.net into your favorite search engine and you should come up with a the paint.net website where you can easily download it from. The next thing we're going to need for this particular tutorial is the Vander Motten paint.net effects. So here's the search term Vander Motten paint.net effects. You want to search for that. And it's actually this paint.net effects at users.telenet.be here. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And here's this download page. You want to say download now. So you go ahead and click on that. And what that's going to give you is a zip that you download. You go ahead and open the zip and um, go ahead and extract this stuff and there's an installer there that will do the installation for you. Uh, it's a very simple installer. You just click through um, doing next and finish etc like you typically would with an installer so that's a very easy install um, might not be a bad idea to close paint.net before you run that install and I believe you'll almost certainly have to restart it if you had it open so the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and open up paint.net since we have already installed the Vandermotten effects and the reason we installed that is because he has a special drop shadow effect that we're going to use in this tutorial. Now what you want to do is go ahead and open up an image to which you want to apply a drop shadow. And I've got one here, a picture of a motherboard and first thing I'm going to do, um, this thing is really huge, I'm going to resize it, I want it to be a smaller size so that I could use it on a web page. So I resized it to a width of 300 there, much smaller. I think it was 4200 some initially. Um, okay, the next thing that you're going to need to do is add a layer. You'll see here I've got this layers window open. You may not have that open by default. If you don't see it, what you want to do is come up to window and click on layers. Or you can just hit the F7 key to bring that up. So I want to add a layer. There's a little button here for add new layer. So I'll click that. Now we've got a new layer and the new layer is selected. So the next thing that you will want to do is to... I've had good luck with using white and I draw a rounded rectangle. So as you saw I have this colors window here which once again if you don't have that open go to window and then colors or hit F8. Um, you can select white. By default, black is your selected color and white is a secondary color. And I just hit the swap colors button to swap those. Or you could come down here and select white as well by clicking on that. Now I'm going to select the rounded rectangle tool. So I'll go ahead and do that. And like I said, we want to be on the layer 2 that we just added because we don't want to draw actually on our main layer. So what you want to do is you're basically drawing the outline of the part of the image that you're going to apply the drop shadow to. So that looks good to me. I like that. And now the next thing that I want to do is I want to select that rectangle and I will do that using the magic wand. Click on the magic wand and then there's this tolerance meter up here and I'm going to drop that down to zero so it will actually 
might try like 2%. We'll try that. Um, that means it's going to select uh, only colors that are very close to what we're clicking on here. So I'm going to click right exactly on that white rectangle. And it looks like we may need to increase the tolerance on that because it didn't select as much as I had hoped for. We'll try it again here. Try 21%. Let's do edit. Oh, I don't want to do that. We'll undo this. We will do edit, deselect. We'll try to select again here. And not having a lot of luck with that, so I'm going to go ahead and undo. I'm going to undo all the way back, keep edit, undo, or control Z to the point where I remove my rectangle. And I'm going to go back to this rectangle tool again and actually change the width to a 5. Let's try that. I believe that's what I did last time, and that worked a little bit better. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to do my outline there, and now I'm going to come up here, and my tolerance really should be able to do it with like 2%, so let's try that. Yep, that worked a lot better. Um, now, what we're going to do is go ahead and fill the outside area on the second layer, and the way that we do that is we have to go up here and go to Edit, Invert Selection, and what has happened is the white area that we the white rectangle is not selected everything else is and this is only on that layer 2 so now I want to take my paint bucket I'm gonna flip my colors again hitting that swap color button and I'm gonna drop black into this outside area now I want to select that outside area I'm going to do that. Now I want to switch layers back to my background area. And I am going to clear my selection. I switch to a different layer and my selection is still present. So that's really nice. We'll do edit, erase selection, or hit delete. Okay, so I have erased that area. And the next thing I want to do is remove this layer 2, so I'll click on the layer 2, and then I click the X, the Delete Layer button. As you can see now, I have only my one layer, and I have rounded the part of the image that I want to apply the drop shadow to. So now, the next step is to select whatever color I want the drop shadow to be. In this case, I happen to want it to be a white drop shadow. You know, I'm planning on using it against a black background. So I just did my swap again. White is my primary color. And now I'm ready to come up here to the effects menu and go to object and then drop shadow. And this is a new effect that was added with that installation of the Vandermotten paint.net effects. I'm going to leave my settings at the default here and click OK. And now you can just barely see there around the edge we've got a drop shadow. So at this point, I mean that may be all you want to do. Um, actually, you know, to be honest, I'm not quite centered here. So I could probably center this out a little bit better maybe something like that and I would do image crop to selection that's a little bit better centered and you can choose to either save it at this point if you want the transparency or you could add an additional background layer so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'll do add new layer that's gonna be my background layer and then 
I'm going to swap colors once again, grab my paint bucket, and fill this in with black, and then I'm going to move that layer down, and now we can see the drop shadow effect very nicely against that black background. So that's about all there is to it. That's how to take a photo and apply a rounded drop shadow effect to it within paint.net. Hopefully you'll find that to be useful and um, hopefully you can apply it to some of your upcoming graphic projects.